everybody. We want to welcome you. Wherever you're watching us this morning, we want to say thank you for tuning in. Welcome to Bayside Church. We ask that you just um, worship with us this morning in your own way, whether you stand to your feet, whether you just close your eyes and raise your hands, whatever the case may be. But we just ask that you um, worship our Lord and Savior with us this morning. We're glad you're here.
storm surrounding me, let it break. At your name still, call the sea to still, the rage in me to still, every wave. At 
earth. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. time of worship, God, and we just say thank you that you are so great, God, that no matter what we're facing each day, God, no matter what we face in the next minute, God, that you're greater than whatever it is, that we don't have to worry, that we don't have to have fear, God. You are so great. You're greater than fear. You are greater than disease. You are greater than chaos, God. And we thank you for that today, God. We pray for your peace over ourselves and over our city and over our nation and over this world, God. We pray for provision, God. We pray that you would make a way and we know that you will. And we pray for health and we pray for healing, God. For every person on this earth right now, God, who needs healing, we just pray that you would place your hands upon them, God. We lift them up to you, and we know that you are the ultimate healer, God. I'm thankful that I'm in your hands. Heavenly Father, just continue to be with us as we walk through this next week. God, we thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, Bayside family. I didn't hear you. Say that again. Hey. Good morning. We're so glad that you're joining us from home. Uh, we know this has been some trying times for people and some difficult uh, days for people, but it's okay. We're going to get through this. God has this. Uh, he is not surprised by what is going on in the world. And so be encouraged this morning. And I hope over the next few moments as we uh, worship together and, and thank John and, and Brittany for a, a great job of that and Chris and Adam and uh, John behind the scenes making sure that uh, our broadcast is going and uh, that we're able to do this together. Uh, be patient with us. Can you imagine this morning Facebook employees as they're working to make sure everything stays up as every church in America is on Facebook this morning. So uh, we, we're thankful that they're uh, doing what they're doing right now as well. Uh, a couple things. We want to welcome you this morning. Uh, make sure that if you're not getting emails from the church, that you go ahead and send an email to info at baysidechurchpc.com because we want to make sure that you're getting information. We will be doing other broadcasts, uh, devotions by video, uh, children's ministry, some youth things that will be coming up, but you won't know about them unless you're uh, getting email from us, uh, and we'll do our best to text that info out as well. So please uh, email info at baysidechurchpc.com. If you're not getting text, give us a number that you would like to get text from as well because we want you to stay informed. So today, I'm going to start a series that we're going to be working in uh, for the next several weeks that basically is titled this, What to Do When You Do Not Know What to Do. And I don't know about you this morning, but uh, there's these questions that have been in my mind over the last couple of weeks of uh, what, what do I do when I don't know what to do? What, what do I put my hands to when the world shuts down around me? In my world, as I know, it shuts down. What do I do when I do not know what else to do? So I want to ask a couple of questions this morning. Have you, ever, have you ever found yourself in that situation that you had no idea what you should do? And maybe you contributed to that situation. Maybe it was some type of an issue in your family, or maybe you had a, a huge decision to make, or uh, maybe as a parent you had a wayward child uh, that wasn't making good decisions or a child that was lost, and, and you're just struggling to uh, find the, your way with your child, or uh, maybe you just did something stupid. Raise your hand if you did something stupid this morning. I'll raise both hands. Uh, we've all done something that we're probably not proud of and things that, that contributed to our situation. Or maybe you did nothing to contribute to the situation, but a situation just happened that really just rocked your world or turned your world upside down. Or like we're facing today, maybe you faced a major crisis, uh, not just a pandemic, but a crisis in your family or a crisis on your job. So what do you do when you do not know what to do. We want to give you a couple of things this morning to focus on. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along with me in 2 Kings chapter 4, and I'm reading uh, verses 1 through 7, and I'm reading out of the NIV this morning. And this is talking about a woman who was faced with a similar situation. It says, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming and to take my two boys as his slaves. And Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And the woman replied, your servant has nothing there at all except a small jar of olive oil. So here's the question again. What do you do when you do not know what to do? Uh, maybe you've heard this old statement that desperate times call for desperate measures. Anyone ever heard that this morning? Yeah, desperate times call for desperate measures. And maybe you feel like you're in this situation this morning that you're in desperate times. And so you're, you're having to take desperate measures. Uh, this woman, this widow was in the midst of such a time in her own life. Her husband had passed away, and, and we read that in verse 1, and she had this difficult situation financially. And it's not like today when we have a difficult situation financially that the lights get shut off or uh, our mortgage gets due and they tack on more bills or we can't pay the, the credit card payments so they, they close up the card and they tack on more bills. It's not that way. In this day, what was happening, they were in a financial crisis, and the creditor was coming to take her two children as slaves to pay off the debt. Maybe it was something her husband did. Maybe it was something she did. We don't know that, but she lost her husband. She had no money, and now she's in danger of losing her children. Can you put yourself in that situation this morning, how difficult that must have been for her as she was facing this? Her whole life had been turned upside down, and she didn't know what to do. So what do we do when we do not know what else to do? So I want you to take a note of a couple of things this morning as we're looking in this passage. Number one, verse one says, the widow is a wife of the man from the company of the prophets. So I, I want you to take a note this morning that her husband was a spiritual man. They believed in God. Their family were, were following God. Her husband was walking with Elisha. 
Uh, if you remember who Elisha, one of the greatest prophets ever known, and did incredible work and incredible miracles, and, and he was a part of the company of Elisha. So this wasn't someone that didn't know God or about the things of God. And so what I want you to take away from this this morning is this, is that sometimes difficult things happen in life, even to the best people, even to all of us. Sometimes difficult things happen in life. And I want to remind you this morning that God is not mad at us. God is not mad at the world and has unleashed this sickness on people. That, that's not what has happened. God is not mad with you, and he's not cursing you or me with, with sickness or trouble. But throughout Scripture, we see that God allows things to happen. But the thing that I want us to focus on this morning is this. You faced difficult times before. I faced difficult times before. We're going to continue to face difficult times. But here's what we always know when we look to Scripture and when we look back on our lives, that God does something wonderful on the other side. I want to say that again, that God does something wonderful on the other side. Yes, difficulties, man, going through them are, are so painful sometimes. But God always does something wonderful on the other side. So the next thing I want you to take note of this morning is this is that the church, the body of Christ, has responded to every crisis the world has ever known. I want to say that again. The church, you and I, the body of Christ, has responded to every crisis the world has ever known. And let me give you some ways how. The church prays. Man, I hope that you've been bathing yourself in prayer the last few days. The church gives. The church makes sure people around them have what they need. The church serves. The church has responded to every humanitarian crisis, every physical crisis, every war. The church has always stepped up to the plate and met a crisis head on. So one of the things that we say around here this morning is this, is that we can let it be an opportunity, not a what? An obstacle, right? We, we want it to be an opportunity, not an obstacle. But if we want the situation that we're in right now to be an obstacle, listen, it'll be the greatest obstacle you've ever faced. If you want it to be an obstacle, it will be the greatest obstacle you've ever faced. But if you want it to be an opportunity, it will be one of the greatest opportunities you've ever had come your way. One of the greatest opportunities. This is a chance for you this morning to bring light to a great darkness. So what do you do when you do, know what, do not know what to do? I'm going to give you a couple things. Number one, you seek God's face and help first. You seek God's face and help first. Before everything else, before you panic, before you lose hope, before you fall apart, before you trust yourself, you seek God's face and help first. When we talk about seeking God's face, what, we, what we're talking about this morning is getting to know him, seeking to know him, to understand his character, to understand um, his, his ways and to hear his voice. And throughout scripture, we've been prompted to do that. Uh, Psalm 105, and, uh, verse 4 says this in the NIV. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. So why are we seeking God's face? What is the purpose of seeking God's face? The purpose of seeking God's face is this, that the word face translates into presence. That we're seeking God's presence. The English Standard Version says this of Psalm Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. See, the Lord wants us to spend time with him. God wants to get to know you and I, just like we all know each other. One of the most difficult things about this, this situation is that we're not able to be together. And we love being able to together. We love to meet. We love to break bread together. We love to go places together. We love to celebrate in the church. We love to stand in the halls and talk. And we love to, to catch up. And it's so difficult when we can't be that face-to-face -face community. But this is a time when you can seek the face of God and have face-to-face -face conversation and face-to-face -face presence with our powerful and almighty God. And the, the, the word tells us that if we promise, uh, if we seek him, he promises that we'll find him. Listen to Jeremiah 29 and 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. In Matthew 7, 7 through 8, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened for everyone who receives. Everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. See, when we seek God, we get to know him, and he will become our desire more than anything else. This morning, what is your desire? How do you feel in this moment? What is your number one desire? What is, what is your number one hope? What is your number one fear? Hopefully that God 
and seeking his presence were places, all those things. So how can we seek God's face? It's pretty simple. Most of you know this this morning. There are a few primary ways that we seek God's face, his word. We get into his word. We study the scripture. We memorize it. We hide it in our heart. We tuck it away. We verbalize it. When fear grips us, we begin to speak his word. When we begin to lose hope, we begin to speak his word. When we begin to experience trouble, we speak his word. So staying in his word. The second is prayer, that, that we pray. And the, and the scripture reminds us to pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean just a place of private prayer every day, but when you're, when you're walking around in your yard or you're walking through your house, that you're continuing to uh, operate in a spirit of prayer, to pray without ceasing, to continue to, to talk to God and to pray and lay out your petitions and your troubles, everything before him. And the last way this morning is worship, and we've just done that. We can worship. And this is a great opportunity as you're spending time in your homes to, to worship and to bring your family in, worship together, worship. Pray to God, speak to God, call out to God through worship. So we read his word, we learn his character and his ways. We, as we pray to him, we spend time with him, we, we learn to hear his voice, and when we worship him, he shows up and we experience his presence. And that's what it means to seek God's face, that he's going to show up and we'll get to experience his presence. See, I want to challenge you this morning because there's no better time than right now to be seeking God's face and help first. There's no better time to be putting your trust in God, not in what you can do. Listen, right now, there's nothing you can do. It's time to put your, your, your trust and your hope in God as you seek his face and his help first. And when we do, he'll show up. So I want to take you back to the widow this morning in 2 Kings uh, chapter 4, verses 3 through 7. Elisha said this, Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you, you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. Verse 5, she left him, and she shut the door behind her and her sons. And they brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. And when all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there's not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. And she went and told the man of God, and he said this, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. See, I want to remind you this morning that God has always made a way for his people. And he will always make a way for his people. See, God made a way for the women, the widow woman to survive. She had debtors, she had creditors that were coming to take her children. But God provided for her. But not, not just to keep her sons from slavery. Not just to survive and to keep her sons from slavery, but to survive, to keep her sons from slavery, and to thrive in the midst of it, with all of her needs being met. The last verse says to go, and you and your sons can live on what is left. See, today may be like anything else you've ever faced. Today may be like no other struggle that you've ever had. Inside of you, you may have emotions and your heart may be in turmoil, you may be so frustrated, you may be hurt, you may be scared, you may be in panic. Listen, today, there's no situation like this that we've ever faced throughout the world. But the one thing that we know that has been our constant, our steady, our rock, is that God will always make a way for his people. The circumstances this morning may have a tendency to cause panic and fear. Everything around you may seem dark and full of despair. Listen, I want to tell you this morning, it's your time to shine. It's your time as a believer in Jesus Christ to shine, to make a difference. You say, well, Ivan, how can I make a difference? I've been cooped up in my house and my kids are driving me crazy and my husband's on my last nerve. Listen, I can tell you, you have a yard. Get outside first and get some sun, right? <laughs> get outside first and, and let the sun shine on you. It'll make you feel better and, and, and just get away from whatever's happening for a moment. But then this is the way to, to shine, to look for opportunities. Listen, it's a time to pray. It's a time to get serious about prayer. Man, walk your yard and pray. And pray God's protection. Pray God's blessing. Pray God's strength. Stand at your fence and meet your neighbor again. Get to know that neighbor. Ask them, hey, is there something I can pray with you about? I know that, you know, we got to stay six feet apart, but can I pray with you? Is there anything that I can help you with? Do I have something that you need? Can I share a meal with you? Can I, can I send something your way? Make a difference. You can smile. As people walk by, you can smile and say, hey, I want you to know that God loves you and we love you too. We're all going to get through this. You can be the hope that God has placed in your heart to other people. Pray over the phone. 
pray over the fence. Pray through windows. Get active online. Right now, online experiences have just exploded. Get active. Start sharing things. You can share prayers online. You can share scripture online. You can share positive thoughts online. Listen, we don't need any more negativity. We need the church, the church of Jesus Christ, to step up and take this opportunity to be the light and the love of Jesus Christ right where we are. Post scripture, post prayers, post, post your testimony. I'm going to challenge you today. Post your testimony. You have plenty of time. Sit down and write out your testimony of when you found Jesus Christ. Sit down and write out your testimony of a time that God healed you or your child. Sit down and write your testimony out of a time you had a financial need or you needed a job and God stepped up and met it. And post it so that other people can be reminded that God moves in some of the worst situations that is known to man and in our lives. Be a light in the darkest of times. Listen, it's an opportunity or an obstacle. And listen, it's up to you this morning. It's up to you to make the difference. It's up to you to be the light and the love of Jesus Christ right where you are. Listen, I'm going to close this this morning in prayer. And I know that situations like this cause us to have a tendency to, to look at ourselves and to, to isolate. Listen, this is not about isolation. This is about social distancing so that we can do our part as the church not to spread sickness. But this is also a time to self-reflect and to ask God to change us and to work on us and to help us as we grow closer to him in, in the middle of this as we seek God's face. And I wanna pray with you this morning and ask God to help you. But I also wanna ask God to help us to have opportunities to be the light and the love of Jesus Christ. Listen, one of the things that we do often is we raise our hands and surrender to God. But this morning, I want you to do something different. Right where you're at home, I just want you to raise your hands like this. As a, as a sign to God, God, feel me this morning. God, I'm offering my hands to you this morning. I want you to feel me. Would you pray with me this morning? God, as we come to you this morning, God, this has been so difficult for all of us. God, it's so difficult to be out of our routines. It's so difficult, God, not to, to be able to get out and go because we're people that are on the go. But God, this morning we come to you and we ask for your help. God, I pray that you would teach us when we do not know what to do, God, that we would turn to you, that we seek you first above everything else. God, forgive us when we've trusted our own hands. Forgive us, God, when we thought we could make a way, when we, when we could take care of situations, not just this situation, but other situations in our lives. God, forgive us when we thought we could do it on our own. God, this morning we come to you in full surrender. We come to you in full surrender. And now, God, we ask you to fill us. God, as we lift our hands to you this morning, we're a lot like the widow who didn't know what to do. She didn't know where to turn. She didn't know what was going to happen to her own children in her home. God, this morning, I pray that in our same situation, when we don't know what the, whole, the future holds, God, that you would be the God of our uncertainty. God, that you would be the God of our peace, the God of our hope, that you would be the strength that we need to face this moment. God, that you would use us to change this world. God, I might not be able to reach Africa today, but I can reach my next door neighbor. God, I may not be able to make a difference or on the other side of this country, but right now I can make a difference across the street. God, as we lift our hands this morning, would you feel us? God, I pray right now that we would feel your presence. God, that your Holy Spirit would descend upon our homes in this moment, that we would feel your spirit lifting us up God, that we would feel your spirit pushing us forward. God, as we surrender our lives to you, fill us this morning, Lord. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace this morning. Cover us. God, we ask you to move. God, we pray for every need this morning. God, those that are facing difficulties in their, their bodies, Lord, heart disease, sugar issues, Lord, we ask you to touch them this morning. God, we pray for the Roche family this morning. We pray for Hugh. God, we ask you this morning to just touch his body. We ask you, God, for your will to be done in this situation. Be with that family this morning. God, we pray for every need, for every struggle, Lord. We call out members of our families to you this morning, God, those that need you. God, we ask you to touch Wayne this morning, Lord, to help him recover from this surgery. Lord, we ask you to move in a powerful way. God, this morning we pray for our, our nation. God, we pray for our leaders, our president, Lord, our Congress, Lord, those down to our local and state leaders that are making difficult decisions. I pray, God, that men and women of God would influence them as they make these decisions. And God, I pray that you would let them see your glory moving. 
God, I pray that this will be a spark of revival in this country. God, that sometimes it takes difficulty for us to turn to you. God, may this be a spark of revival in the United States. Lord, would you do that work? God, we pray for our military. Lord, those that are all over this globe that are, that are serving. And Lord, they're also helping in this pandemic. I pray God for, for safety and safe passage. We pray for our doctors and our nurses and Lord, those that are, that are working in the middle of the hospitals. And Lord, they're working all these hours. And I pray God that you would be their strength and that you would be their great protector. Would you do that work today, God? Lord, I pray for those this morning. Lord, specifically for those that feel a sense of panic. God, I pray against panic this morning in the name of Jesus. God, I pray against a sense of overwhelming uncertainty, Lord, that causes us to panic in our mind and in our spirit. And God, I pray this morning that your Holy Spirit would bring peace to these hearts and these lives today. Because we know, God, you're bigger. We know, God, that you're greater. We know, God, that you're stronger. We know, God, that you're able. We know, God, this morning that your abundance will flow forth in the middle of great need. Would you do it this morning? God, for those that are worried about their job, those that are worried about all these uh, peripheral issues. God, I pray this morning that you would remind them that you hold them in their hand and you're going to take care of every need, every situation, every trouble, every struggle. Lord, we place it in your hands this morning. We praise you for it, God. Come on, church, just for a moment, right in your living rooms, wherever you find yourself this morning on your porch, in your backyard. Come on, lift up praise to the King this morning. God, we praise you. Jesus, we worship you. Lord, we magnify you. We say that you're greater than anything. You're greater than any struggle, any trouble. We thank you this morning, Jesus, that you went to the cross for our salvation. We thank you this morning that when this life is over, life is just beginning as we step into eternity. Lord, as we fix our hope on the hope that comes from Jesus Christ, Lord, we lift you up this morning. We magnify you. We glorify you. We pray that you're holy and that you're righteous and that you're powerful. And Lord, we trust you this morning. And we ask you to help us to trust you more. Lord, as we go through our week, as we go through our day, Lord, help us to make a difference around us. Help us to be everything that you want us to be in this world as we shed, share the light and the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, we praise you this morning. We thank you. We thank you for this time. We pray, God, that you would bless it. We pray, God, that you'd be glorified in us and through us. We pray it in this morning in the mighty, powerful, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for watching our broadcast this morning. Please be reminded if you are not getting email or text that you would please send us a message at info at baysidechurchpc.com. We thank you for tuning in. God bless you. We're praying for you. We're here for you. If you need us, reach out. If not, we'll see you next week. God bless you.